Hey, I have the immense pleasure of being joined by Sarah Stringer today. How are you, Sarah? I'm really great. Thank you. <laughs> Better than I've ever been. Awesome. <laughs> today is your one year carniversary. Cheers, yeah. my friend. Let's do a seltzer toast. Cheers. <laughs> To, Cheers, many and more, thank you. to many more years of improved health and carnivory to you. Absolutely. I remember back when you first started, you joined the coaching groups. And from day one, it was a breeze and you instantly lost 100 pounds. Is that how it went? Well, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I think people need to hear that. So what were, first of all, what made you even consider trying a carnivore diet? Well, I live in south in southwest of England in Somerset, and um, we were lucky enough to get tickets for Glastonbury Festival, and it rolled over because the pandemic, and then it rolled over again. And I thought, oh, I've got loads of time to lose the weight to make this a doable thing because I was two hundred and seventy pounds, um, and basically we got to the beginning of May, and the ticket the festival's at the end of June, and I thought I've got to have to do something drastic or give up the tickets. And carnivore was the drastic thing <laughs> that yeah. I chose to do. Because I've been I'd found you, I've been following you for really quite some time. Um, and I'd found you via Ken Berry. Yes. Um, and I just thought, what I mean, it just sounded so weird Great. because it's so um re the reverse of everything we're told especially absolutely. i mean in the uk as well the five the five fruit and veg a day message is absolutely sacred over here yes and so what were your challenges when you got started i kind of already know this because i remember and it just makes me so happy that you are having your one year carniversary but yeah. for those that weren't there tell them what were the struggles yeah. well my main my main one is the fact i'm not really a meat eater <laughs> so that, that was the biggest challenge first of all. Um, and um, yeah, so I, st I started with doing the the bacon, beef, butter, eggs. Yeah. And by day five, it was kind of like, oh, got to have more variety, got to have more variety. And I sort of chucked in some, you know, some shrimp and, and uh, salmon and things like that. And, and I managed to sort of like carry on. And it was a case of like, well, OK, this this is this is sort of working. This seems to be within the rules um and um yeah that was my main challenge and I, I realized that actually I need variety and I need variety in textures and I need variety in flavors um but within carnivore I've been able to find that I love to hear that and I remember one of the first conversations that I at least remember at this point with you is you said you know you have a social life you're very social <laughs> and you said I've got so many like parties and outdoor events and and typically yeah. you would go and you would, and your family and friends eat carbs and drink alcohol, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, and I remember you said, I don't, yeah. it's hard for me to picture how that's going to go yeah. without carbs and alcohol. Yeah. And I think a lot of people in the beginning have that struggle. And then you said, plus, I don't even really love meat. Thought, oh man, this yeah. is going to be a, this is going <laughs> to be an uphill battle. But then yeah. you just kept showing back up week after week and it seemed like you were getting along better. You made it through the festivals. You yeah. started drinking more seltzer water, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so what benefits have you experienced in the past year? Uh, initially, um, the first real, apart from the weight loss, um, but the it was the lift, complete lifting of brain fog. That mm. was the one, the thing that really struck me. And that was it, like within the first three weeks. And the other thing was waking up in the morning and no longer feeling aching all over, no no longer waking up, stepping out of bed and those first few steps being, you know, painful. Um, and, you know, those two things alone were sort of like pretty miraculous. Improved sleep. That's that's impressive. Um, and then I had a whole load of um, medications I was on. Um, I was pre-diabetic. Well, obviously, I'm no longer pre-diabetic. Um, I've managed to reduce my blood pressure meds right down. I've reduced my thyroid meds because I've had hypothyroidism for a very long time. Um, I'm off omeprazole completely, which is a proton pump inhibitor. Yes. Um, ironically, now that I'm eating more fat than ever before, I can now digest it and I'm not getting heartburn. Awesome. <laughs> that's even, and that's even without a gallbladder. Wow. Um, 
and uh, the biggest deal is I'm off my antidepressants. And I'd been on antidepressants for, well, decades. Wow. And I'm I'm very good at masking. You know, if people th- thought who who's on antidepressants, well, they wouldn't think it was me. Um, so um, yeah, I've just uh, and I wouldn't say it's been a hundred percent easy coming off them. And in fact, I came off them going into winter, which probably wasn't the best time to do it. But um, actually, you know, I've managed. Um, and, um, you know, I'm feeling good and I'm feeling positive and there's, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, lot of good stuff going on. I've got a few more things about, um, my benefits. So I don't snore anymore, which is, which is great. Well, only rarely. So that's a big one. Um, I have that chicken skin on the top of my arms. That's all gone. Cool. Um, stamina and fitness. I have to say, sometimes I wonder how I did what I did when I was 270 pounds. Yeah, but you know, I'm so much easier now. Um, my chin is less bristly, so that, that's a plus. Right, <laughs> and a big and a big one. I live in a four story house, and I can now come down the stairs, putting one, you know, going down each stair properly, like a proper, a proper person. Because <laughs> when you're morbidly obese, the fear of tripping is yeah. very real. Right. Um, so, yeah, to actually be able to come down the stairs comfortably and at speed, that's that's a big one, actually. It is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, those are great benefits. I know people will see your before and after and think all you did was you lost weight. And that's what a lot of people, of course, would love to do. But that's what I try to tell people, too. I'm like, yes, I lost weight. There's so much more. Yeah. And losing the weight's not a straight journey either. My my um my uh, line definitely goes. Well, it sort of started off quite steep, and then uh and yeah, and it and it's very yeah very very much like that really. Um, and there've been plateaus and there've been little rises. I do weigh every day, which I know I shouldn't <laughs> because it's not a good idea. But actually, I found it helpful. Yeah. Um, I wish I'd taken my measurements at the beginning. Um, because I know that that would have um, been really impressive. I know how loose my clothes are. Um, So that's really good. It's Um, so important for people to hear that losing weight. And when people ask me, how long did it take you to lose 120 pounds? Forever. Okay. It took forever because (laughs) that's how it feels. And there were times when you're like, yes, losing. I'm doing it just And you keep doing it just right. And then you stop. I mean, for months, nothing. And then you gain and you lose and you plateau and you're like, I'm doing the same thing. But people need to know that, that it is frustrating and it's not a straight line. So I appreciate you saying that. You've got to hold on to those non-scale victories because they are just as important. They really are. And they can carry you through. If the only judge of am I succeeding is that one number on a bathroom scale, uh, you're going to get frustrated. Yes. <laughs> We need lots of other data points to look at, including, can I go down the steps like a normal person? That's great. Yeah. So one of the things I have struggled with over the last year, and it's sort of, you know, each time it's sort of like come up on me a bit sort of like unawares, and it's um, actually grieving for certain foods and actually knowing that I can't just, this isn't a diet. It's not going to work for me long term if I view this as a diet It's an actual way of eating for life, Um, certainly for me. Um, And knowing that I can't, there are certain things that I love to eat and I cannot have them anymore because it just, it it would get me straight back into sugar eating. Um, That's taken some some real, like, you know, adjustment. And also the things around traditions and, um, you know, family celebrations and and sort of feast times, the fact that actually it's Christmas, therefore there is this particular cake, it's Easter, therefore there is this particular sort of bread. Um, You know, it's pancake day. That was where I really came unstuck. Well, almost came unstuck. I was saved by a member of your group 
Um, but um, yeah, nearly came unstuck on, on pancake day. And I couldn't believe how sad I felt at not having a pancake on pancake day until in your in your in the Facebook book group for the, the month that I was uh, with you on, um, you know, someone said, no, 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 you can make a pancake. You just use, you know, a certain amount of um, uh, soft cheese and an egg, whip it together and you can make a pancake. And I, it just, yeah, I was in tears of joy. It just saved me. It really did. Yeah, because I could have gone off the rails big time then. Yeah. So yeah, but things like that is this the it's the adjustment, right. and actually recognizing well, what do I want more? Do I actually want a healthy future life, and the possibility to not only be alive long enough to see future grandchildren, but to actually be an engaged granny as well? Yeah, rather than one in a on a mobility scooter is what I would have been. That was so well said. Uh, in times when I was faced with, oh, I really want that, I think it's important for people to remember that what you're taking in is the full package. If we were to eat the real pancakes and go back to our old foods, I would I would go right back to feeling how I used to feel. And I would look how I used to look, and you would too. And we would take on our old health problems. We'd have to go back to our old medications. I would get the boils. Like, is it worth it? And at that point, like... No, I'm just going to make a different pancake. It's cool, man. <laughs> Keep your pancakes. Yeah, I'll take an egg and cheese pancake and no boil, please. <laughs> all right. So were there, I know you cut out carbs. You switched to all animal products. Was there anything else that you did along the way that you think could have contributed, whether it was biohacks or tips or anything else you spoke early on in in the in your your groups that i've attended um about um promoting your mirror neurons and i have to say that has helped enormously and i've um, spent a lot of time um uh looking at youtube videos online um joining the various groups uh, online and um you know and, and and talking to on the facebook groups to the people that i've been in your group with month on month um and and from from previous months and uh it's such a supportive community so sort of finding my tribe has been so valuable um and then finding other people in the uk to meet up with as well it's been really really great but, i mean there's also been things like being kinder to myself you know recognizing that no i wasn't i wasn't lacking in self control i wasn't a failure um i was addicted to carbohydrates and actually it really was beyond my control and it was only when i completely cut them out and got food freedom that i you know i was able to sort of like be properly me again um so that's been a really big thing we're so lucky aren't we, we? are lucky <laughs> we are lucky i just feel really blessed i have to say um been so fortunate that um I mean, I've tried everything in the past, absolutely everything. And my heaviest, I was um, 290 pounds, wow. um, you know, which is I'm five foot, nothing, five wow. foot, nothing. I mean, it's it's unsusta you know, completely unsustainable. Yeah. And I'm now facing uh, the prospect of a healthy, God willing, long, you know, future. And um, it's, you know, and not having to have all those um diseases of of um older life that we are sort of given to believe are, are inevitable it's um yeah it's a miracle it is it is yeah i have the same mindset we are just so blessed that to have yeah. found this and that we get to feel this good and eat so well and so what does a typical day of eating look like for you sarah uh oh well buried as i've said before yeah. <laughs> i start my day with uh, a cup of coffee with um i have double cream and mct oil in it and that gives me a sort of like a good old boost for um for the morning um and then lunchtime i might have a souffle omelet or because i it's texture i really enjoy the texture of a souffle omelet as opposed to just a straightforward omelet um, or I might have a steak or I might have a, uh, a bowl of bone broth with seafood and like a, a jammy boiled egg in it. Um, and then I don't snack. I used to constantly graze. Um, mm -hmm. I don't snack. Um, and then in the evening, I'll either have some steak or I'll have some lamb or I'll have some, uh, you know, a nice big piece of salmon, um, uh, or butter on the side, um, if I ever feel as though I do need a little something, it will be a couple of big spoonfuls of cream or a little piece of cheese, probably. You know, that's what I'd have. Yeah, all butter. Yeah. It does not sound like you are suffering. 
This <laughs> sounds delicious. Well, Sarah, I wish you a happy one year anniversary, and I'm so grateful that you spent your anniversary here talking to me and sharing your success with people. And I know it's going to inspire others. So thank you. I'm honored to be your friend. Oh, thank you, Kelly Hogan. It's it's in no small part to to you that uh, that I've achieved this. So um, cheers to you. Uh, cheers <laughs> to you too. Thank you, Sarah. Bye.